Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Leech Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco, here for, an inst for the first episode in Bordeaux. Actually we're in uh, uh, Saint-Julien, uh, just south of Pontiac. And I'm here with uh, Philippe Blanc. We're at uh, Chateau uh, Bechevel. Is that correct? That's correct. correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My French is not very good sometimes. No, really <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he just took a, he just took me on a tour of um, where they bring the grapes in, do all the pressing and the vat and the barrel room. I got a bunch of pictures, so I will post. I'll have a special gallery on the website now for pictures from the trip. Um, but we just went through all that and talked about some great things. And now we're going to do some tastings. Um, he's been kind enough to. Get, uh, we're going to do a tasting of the 2010, um, where it's where it's at right now before it gets released. What in next May? Next September. Next September. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I'm getting kind of a little preview. This is something a little different. Uh, I did do that with a couple other um, wineries in Texas recently. Um, so we're going to do that and taste a couple wines. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have you kind of tell everybody else who you are and. And hopefully the, the sound is pretty good. <laughs> okay. uh, so thank you very, very much for being here and being us. Uh, my name is Philippe uh, Blanc. Yeah, you put that on the floor. Just put it on the floor. <laughs> and uh, I'm the managing director and winemaker of uh, Chateau Bechler. And I've been here since 95. So a fair few are harvest now. Uh, and every, as we learn every year, and every new vintage is something to learn. Uh, We'll leaving this new vintage to 2011 with some uh, interest. It's not a, an easy one, but uh, we'll try to make our best about it, and uh, we'll, we'll try to, you know, that's a challenge every year to make a good vintage. Right, right. So, um, and, and like today, uh, it's been cloudy and raining, and you've been saying that it's been pretty dry all year up until recently, right? It has been dry, uh, 2011 has been a dry year till uh, end of June. Okay. Till 30th of June, it was really a, a worryingly a dry year. Uh, it has changed uh, quite well, <laughs> dramatically, since uh, July. July was quite cloudy and fresh and cool and a bit rainy. And August was not that good, so it, it hasn't been a great summer. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it is a early vintage. That means we'll be, most surely, we'll be picking all the grapes in September. And only in September, nothing in October, which should be quite rare. And the last time it happened was in 2003. So that shows we're about 12, between 10, 10 and 12 days ahead of normal uh, schedule. Right. And like I'm in, in, in my visit here, or planning for my visit, you know, I think all of you kind of figured out you're going to be harvesting a little early. So when I did reach out to some of the places, I had some people say, we're just going to be too busy. You know, so to have you spend some time with me, I know you've been busy all day. Um, so to have you and, and the other the other chateau that said yes, come come visit us. That's very, you know, uh, very honored that they're you know all of you you and everybody else will be able to take some time to uh, to uh, show me some stuff and uh, um, and take time to do some tasting. So um, so the chateau's been around for quite a while. I, I was reading the, in the information booth. Yeah, it's something, like, well, it's something like 300 years, <laughs> 50 years, yeah, something quite recent then. Yeah, just, you know, it, it's just pretty brand new. Um, yeah, not like what, what I'm used to, you know, in the United States, especially in Texas, where they're, most of them are only about 20 to 30 years old. Which is like And, you know, there's, there's a big history, you know, I, I read, I read the, the little history thing in the, in the, uh, in the visitor center. Um, uh, so you go and visit our website and you've got all these... That too? Yes. Yeah, that so easy. so I, I won't spend too much time talking about the history. But it's, it's important to, have, to be in a place where history is there. 
And if we refer to one meeting, which is our job and most important, uh, that shows we're in a real place. Uh, I used to say, if they were able to make great wines in 1900, we have to make good wines in 2010. No, right. I love it, you know? Because at this time it was, you know, no electricity, no barrels, no some one or two uh, uh, horses or whatever, but very small means, and now we've got everything. So we right. hope to make great wines today. We're, we're a little bit spoiled, right, compared to what they were. Well, we try not to be spoiled, but <laughs> if they were making great things with no right. means, we have to make honest thing with great means. Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, the, 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 it's been, the Chateau has been around for quite a while. Um, and uh, uh, for, for the people that, that, that don't know um, or know about or hear about the 1855 classification, um, uh, which, which classification uh, are so, here, uh, the fourth, right? The beige Canal is the fourth classified growth. Okay. Fact. Yeah, correct. Uh, in Saint Julien, the Chateau, the, most of the properties in Saint Julien, uh, at the 85 to 90% is owned by classified growth. In Saint Julien, which is a so high ratio, is very really high country. ratio, yeah. and uh, what I call uh, very seriously. When I, I, try, uh, I make a correspondence with sport, it's a very major league, uh, or the Champions League, uh, if we were talking Just about soccer, soccer, league, soccer league, league, yes, of football. Come on, you Spurs! <laughs> you see, I'm also a Spurs fan for Euro Premier League. league. <laughs> I mean, I guess your Arsenal or Manchester United or something. <laughs> the clerk at the hotel last night was Arsenal. He was very sad that Arsenal lost Saturday. So don't talk about Bordeaux because Bordeaux is in deep trouble at the moment. And, and you're playing tomorrow, right? And the owner, the owner is in Saint Julien. The president of the club is in Saint Julien. Okay. He's making a beautiful one. Full classified gross as well called Chateau Saint Pierre. Okay. That's a absolutely great wine to taste and, and, and to enjoy. But as far as football or soccer for you is concerned, they are in deep trouble. <laughs> so don't, don't talk about the misery of the others. Uh, no, no first growth in Saint Julien. Very top second uh, growth with uh, Leoville Lascaz, with Leoville Barton, Poiferre, Du Crebeau Caillou. Uh, and third and fourth with our neighbors of Granet and Bechevel and Talbot, uh, another great, great estate. And Saint Pierre, I was just talking about. And no fifth. So, you know, concentrate a core, a core of uh, great estates making great wines. And we're the, I, I didn't get to really look, I mean, um, I'll look too hard, but um, uh, the estate is actually on the estuary, right? Or is it? So the estuary is this way. That way, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Facing the estuary, uh, you will see from the outside the view is superb. Uh, 900 meters, uh, nearly uh, half a mile. You've got the river, the estuary, we call it, here people call it the river. The river okay. uh, but it's a large stream uh, going to the sea. Basically, Bordeaux is south this way, which is 40 k south. Mm -hmm. And the ocean is about 50 k north. We're in the middle, basically in the middle. Uh, and that's very important as far as climate is concerned, as far as the, the terroir, you know, this name that the French use, which is terroir. But it implies a lot of uh, influence on the soil. Many, many, many uh, aeons ago, where you know, soil from the Pyrenees, soil from the rest, and the sea was moving on that, so it plays a big role. And today, it plays a big role in terms of temperature mm -hmm. and mind in uh, the climate in the vineyards. Okay, and, and I want to make sure we brought that up because, um, if nothing else, especially in this really in this part of the world, I think. Um, uh, terroir is really kind of, I think, focused on, whereas in other, especially in the United States, they don't, I think they're trying to get to that point of having that sense of place, but it, it's, it's, it's coming. It, yeah. It's coming, but I think, I think they're finally, you know, I think there's a lot of people think that it's a bunch of BS, um, but I think there's there's definitely people, well, I'm sure the people in California agree that it's not, I mean, that there is, you know, from one hill to the next, and even if you're from the top to the bottom of the hill, it's going to be, I mean, I can just tell you, driving home from work um, uh, in my, my uh, day job, um, I have a 30 mile drive to and from work. And at night when I drive home at around 12 in the morning, one in the morning, I'll have the windows down. And at some point when I get closer to where I live, there's just, you know, from here, just from here to, you know, 10 feet away or, or 
or 100 feet away, the temperature just, you can feel that it drops, not just at a degree or two, but it feels like it drops like five degrees, you know? And, and granted, I'm surrounded by concrete and, and asphalt and, and buildings, um, and not, but you can, once you get to where there's a lot more grass, um, you, the temperature just drops. So, I mean, there, there's something to say about, about that, about that part of the climate, like the top of the hill, bottom of the hill, or however it is. And I think they're, they're not the, the wine growers, I think know that, but I think the public is starting to kind of get that maybe there is something to this whole terroir thing, whereas you all have been doing it for hundreds of years. And <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, you know, sometimes you would love not to believe it, but if it were not the case, instead of having 70 different batches and working on the blend and trying to figure out what's the band, I would only have one. Right. Or three. One for Merlot, one for Cabernet, one for Petit Verdot, one for Cabernet Franc. And that would be it. It's not the case. So that means you don't know why, but from a spot to the other, the production is different, the quality is different, and right. then you work on that up and you try to get the best from the conditions that you can get on the spot. And, and you're and, and like you're talking about the qualities, you know, we, we did all the tour and you have your qualities, you have your first and your second wines and discuss, discussing why you have, uh, you know, when you're, when you're figuring out, are these wines going to be your, your, your first wines, are these wines going to be your second wines? I mean, I'm sure the terroir has something to do with that too. We always rely on the terroir and the quality of the terroir as well. And uh, we do believe in the terroir. Very often, uh, if it's good, from the, the beginning, but we know it's coming from, from a weak terroir, we'll be less prone to trust basically this, mm -hmm. this quality because we know it might fade a bit quicker. And on the other end, sometimes from a great terroir, you can feel, oh, it's a bit awkward, uh, it needs time, but it's building up again with time. So it's important we rely on that. But we must rely on tasting and assessment. Right not just looking at a label or looking at a sign or saying it's here so it's done. No, it's tasting, assessment, but nevertheless, the one is never far away from it. Right, exactly. Do I so, pour? Yes, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do some tasting here. So I'm pouring a sample, which is a barrel sample, okay. from Chateau de Chevelle to Salon 10. So again, it's in the barrels for another, uh, let's say, six months. Okay. Uh, or seven months, and uh, it will be bottling. It will be bottled. Sorry, uh, in uh, next June, 2012, and it will be shipped to the customers, uh, professionals or particular uh, customers, in sep not before September 2012. Okay. And we probably recommend drinking this wine in more ten years time than now. Than now, and then one thing we were talking about is that you. You blend and then you blend it and put it in the barrel instead of having it mature and then blend. So what I, what we're tasting here is the blend. It's That's not absolutely the blend. There's no way we can come back on that. And uh, all the mellow we wanted in his ear, all the cabernet we wanted in his ear, and so on. So just the final the final blend will occur. It's what we call a barrel blend. Mm -hmm. That means we respect the ratio of new barrels, old barrels, the ratio between uh, different cooperage, but in terms of varieties, that's it. The game is here, it's finished. Okay. So, and, and is this all four of the varietals that you, all four of the grapes that you We've got in? four varietals uh, in uh, this, uh, this vintage. Uh, I can give you the figures, but I have to check my little papers, <laughs> just in case I say stupid things, but it's 53 cab, 54, sorry, you see, okay. uh, I was wrong, 54 Cabernet Sauvignon. 38 Merlot, 5 Cabernet Franc, 3 Petit Verdot. Okay. So you've got the four varietals, but at different. Mainly, we work with Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot. When right. you've got that, you've got 90% of the blend. So, 2010 was the a vintage of the records. It was a harvest where all the parameters were record high. Okay. So that means we never had to reach such level of ripeness such level of acidity, such level of um, polyphenols, tannins, everything was major. But the bad, the bad, as everything is, if you have only alcohol high and acid is very low, it will be disbalanced. Right. Uh, here, everything is very high, so the balance is the other. And that's very important, very interesting. 
Awesome. I forgot my spit bucket in San Antonio, so um, I can spit in the sink or we can swallow it. You're <laughs> Don't spit on the, on the carpet, please. No. So you can see a color, which is the color of young wine. Okay. But it's very it's deep. Bit, very deep, very rich. And something that I talked about recently is when, when this wine starts aging, it starts getting lighter, whereas with white wines, they get darker. So um, that's just on a visual aspect, you can kind of get an idea how, not precisely how old the wine is, but you can tell the wine's young or kind of middle-aged or, or getting older as, as, it, as it starts getting lighter and lighter with reds. I mean, we're talking not like three to 10 years, we're not talking, you know, it's going to get in 30 years, it'll be a lot lighter or more of a brick color rather than this deep. Uh, deep red, you know, garnet color, um, but uh, as wine ages, it changes color. And it's normal. Do you want me to ask them to stop? Um, yeah, that, it, it is probably getting picked up. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I don't know. It's kind of like when the guys come mow the lawn at the house every once in a while when I record in the morning. <laughs> and I can tell you, um, the place is beautiful. This ha that happens sometimes uh, when I'm at home. We have uh, once a week we have people come mow the lawn for us. Our lawn's not as large as yours, uh, but uh, uh, it has happened where I'm, I'm in the middle of a review and. <laughs> All of a sudden, they show up. Oh, like that. When we're here, the gardeners arrive and with a big boom. Well, usually, they're, usually they show up very early in the morning, so I'm not normally reviewing wine at 8 in the morning or 9, but sometimes I do review that early. You know, it's just what happens. Okay, so anyway, thank you very much for that. So it's, I'm just gonna say it's really tight, you know. There's, it is. It's, you know, it's young, it's, you know, I shouldn't be tasting and smelling all great things, but this is, you know, um, I'm used to drinking the finished wines, but albeit that they usually they're, they're within three to four years of, of, uh, of the vintage. I don't normally drink anything that's much older than that. Um, but I mean, we were talking about balance and I feel that balance. You know, it, it's. What's I think that's what you're looking at this at this stage. You're yeah. looking at the balance, the quality of the tannins, mm -hmm. and uh, the lack of uh, astringency. Right. Nothing yes. harsh. Nothing. You know, sticking the palate. Or what do you think about that? No. It, it's strong. You've got a lot of tannins. You've got a lot, a lot of structure, but it's fine. Uh, silky, ripe tannins. Right. And yeah. That's very important. And uh, like, and. What I'm getting off the bouquet is definitely more more fruit rather than mineralities, which that will come in time, right? One, one of these yes. will be more mineral you rather than it's it's fruit forward. Fruits, spices, a uh, bit of oakiness because it's coming from the right. the barrel. Right so barrel. You, you've got you know the spice and oakiness, but it's a little bit uh, you know yeah. Nevertheless, uh, pencil paintings or. Uh, mm -hmm. Which makes a little bit mineral brings uh, to me uh, the, 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 the thing of minerality as well. See, folks, you do spit when you taste this stuff. <laughs> I had a comment recently off of one of my videos saying, "Why do you spit? And why do you what? You know, when I was going from one wine, I, I do multiple wines a lot of times, and he said." Why do you pour some wine and then pour it out? Because you're rinsing out the glass, you know? <laughs> That's what we do. So, this is very tasty. Uh, so I look forward to, to tasting this in about 10 years. <laughs> and you're really back. But uh, that's really uh, the big pleasure for us with our wines is to, be, to drink these wines between 10 and 20 years of age. Right. That's the per perfect age. So I hope, I hope it will be very enjoyable, but I'm sure this one has got a lot of future. 
and uh, will get very, very good with them. So what will be interesting to observe is the competition between 09, 09 and, and 10. Okay. Two great vintages, and, uh, but two different styles. So it will be interesting to see which one is getting along the road, if one is getting better than the other. Maybe they will be both good, that's what I hope anyway. So what I'll do, I'll give you two glasses in fact. Okay. Because you may, the exercise for you will be to compare first one and second one okay. in the same vintage. So we've got Amiral, second one. That's roughly 45% of the crop. Okay. And we've got Bechel, which is the top 55% of the crop. Okay. Uh, blend is quite different. Uh, I'm just concerned it's a bit too cool. This wasn't a cool room, but um, the blend, there's a big difference in, in terms of blend. Okay. Nevertheless, you'll see the difference, and maybe you'll work out why we selected first one and second one. And every year you have, you don't have like a different um, blend, you'll have a different ratio of all the stuff, and that's so, kind of like, you know, a, you, you spend a lot of time figuring out how you want to blend that, right? With well, it's just, I'm often asked if we are looking, to, we try to make the recipe, try to make the thing the right. same as the previous year. My answer is no, definitely no. Uh, we try to make the best blend we can with the stuff we've done the table. That's the goal. And if it's better than last year, fair enough. If it's not as good as last year, that's life. That's it. can be always getting up. But we are not trying to figure out a recipe to say, ah, oh, if I had that, that would be the same as... No, never. We basically, nevertheless, we worked to try to make the best shell. And then we have some batches and we work to, to have a fine second one after that. So I just check it. That's on the left and the right. Alright, so these are from 2007? 2007. Where, well, you see evolution, that's, that's interesting because it's, uh, it was considered a tough, in, difficult vintage, but uh, you'll make your mind. And I think it's very, very approachable. You know, that's not very old, four years, but it starts to be approachable, especially for second one. Okay. And uh, it shows. If you add 2010, it shows you some ways of evolution of our lines right. with time. And so, with the barrel tasting, I got, I got more of the fruit rather than the minerality. Now this, I'm getting more of the minerality rather than the fruit. So, I mean, they're, they're, so if, you, if you want to understand what happens with wine, wine is, is kind of like a living organism. I mean, it's, there's... It's always changing in the bottle. That's why it, it has a shelf life. Some wines have longer shelf lives, shelf lives, not wives, shelf lives than, than others. <laughs> Put your wife on the shelf. Um, but uh, you know, at some point, you know, you, you want to drink the wine at, when it peaks, but it changes over time. And of course, how you store it is important. If, you know, if you're going to store it for a long time, you definitely want to have it in great conditions. If you're just going to buy the bottle and Drink it that night, or drink it in a couple of days. You know, just don't leave it outside in the hot, in the hot sun. And already there's a, there's a, I mean, I, I see the difference between this and 2010. And uh, 
I'm getting more of everything. So I've been tasting more of the fruit, the minerality, um, more of the spices. Um, whereas with the 2010, I can, you know, it was it was a lot tighter. Whereas this is this is you know obviously developed a lot more, and it should be, but. Um, you, you can see that if you're able to be in a place where you can taste something that's very very young and taste something that's old like a vertical, say a vertical tasting um, you can you can tell you can you can see that you know I did that at the Texas sommelier conference with um, um, Chateau Moussard from Lebanon and Moussard. they had, they yeah. had uh, four reds and four whites and um, it was uh, it was great I, I mean we're tasting we're tasting wine from from the 70s and the 60s, along with more than recent stuff, so um, you're 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 getting that type of it's opened up a lot more. So it's, it's very nice. I like this a lot. I love the nose. This is the type of nose that I. So here in this year, enough. although it may vary, uh, as you were mentioning blend and let's say recipe, but uh, we'll talk about blend. That was a year which enabled us to put quite a lot of Merlot in. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, 44% Cabernet Sauvignon and 52 Merlot. Okay. But it can vary widely. Uh, I can have vintages where I've got only less than 20% uh, Merlot. This year I had 52%. Uh, so that's why it varies from year, year to year. So 44% Cab, 20, uh, 52 Merlot and a little bit of Cabernet Franc. Four percent. Now, so that was the plan in 07. Typically, do you have more Cabernet Sauvignon than Merlot? In the second wine, very often. Okay. But in the first wine, because on the best, we come back to terroir again. On the, some of the very good uh, spots, some years ago in the 80s, they planted a lot of Merlot. It was the trend. Okay. So we've got very good Merlot, and then in my blend of Bechamel, I've got a lot of Merlot. So very often I have got 40, 44, 43% yellow in my mind. Okay. In the future, if I can, I will decrease that by replanting nice Cabernet Sauvignon on these spots. Okay. Because they are terroir for Cabernet Sauvignon. But in the 80s, they, are, they hadn't got this view and they were planting yellows. Okay. So yeah, it was, it was the hot thing. <laughs> so you, you will see here more Cabernet Sauvignon, 55. Okay. 35 Merlot. Five Cabernet Franc, five Petit Verdot. Much silkier. Yeah, it is. It is. It's quite, although it's a bit cool. Yes, it in is. Temperature, but you've got as well freshness. One characteristic of our wines is balance and freshness. Uh, thanks to Cabernet Sauvignon, you always manage to have, you know, this feeling. In some vintage, I don't think it's the case in Bechdel. In some vintage, uh, in some estates, you've got a little bit eucalypt, eucalyptus flavors right, right. brought by Cabernet Sauvignon. But it brings, you know, like menthol mm -hmm. flavors, which makes fresh. You know? Right, right. That was a certain level of acidity, makes the, the feeling of freshness and balance, which is quite pleasant for me, according to my taste, and interesting as a pairing food as well, you know, because we make wine to pair food mm -hmm. more than to drink on its own. I do get really a great balance with with um, with everything there, you know, with the, with the fruit and with the with the uh, minerality. I like this nose better too. I, I'm one of those people that really I can sit there and just if I find a nose I like, I'll smell it and smell it and smell it. And while they're very similar, this just has a little bit of a difference that it's more of my preference. I still like you know I. I if I, had, if I had this wine in front of me, I'd be like, okay, this is great, I'll smell it all day long. But um, the, the minerality quality of this is just a little bit different and, and a little bit better. Um, and of course, the, the taste, I mean, this is a wonderful wine, 
But when you get to this part, it, 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 I don't know, yeah, it has a better feel. It just, like, I think silky is, is a great way to, 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 to describe it or silkier than this one. Um, yeah. Normally when we blend, that's what we're looking for. More depth, more body, more uh, fine tannins. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other ones are not absolutely not bad ones. Don't misunderstand me. It's not you know fake or uh, false wine or uh, damaged wine that we would put no, by no means. Right. But it's sometimes because it's coming from young vines, most of them, young baby, but not young baby, the young vines. Well, it's simpler. You know, it's normal. It will evolve with age mm -hmm. and get get more mature. But at the beginning, it makes wine which are nice, fruity. Uh, but more simple, with less structure, and then that's select them for second one. Right. And if you prefer that, I'm quite happy. That shows we were not too wrong in blending, in making the choice. If you say, oh, that's better, something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and and but it was a great point you made. This this doesn't you know this is a second label that doesn't mean it's not good wine. Um, you know, it, it's something where um, everyone here has that first, a second, maybe even a third label where. You know, it's it's not that you know it's it's not that it's a bad wine. It's just that there is a difference in quality, um, and it shouldn't be looked upon as really anything less than than, than good. It's just it's just it is what it is. It's not that's it's not college basketball versus NBA. There you go. Yes, <laughs> we were discussing uh, how France lost pretty big to Spain last night. I was hoping to get to the hotel in time to watch the game. But uh, I'll, I'll explain all that in, in the actual written blog post. But needless to say, I didn't get to Bayakas uh, on time. I actually didn't get here until today instead of yesterday. So um, it was a very long day of traveling, <laughs> a long two days of traveling. But um, this is wonderful. I mean, You know, it's just a matter of, I mean, if you put either one of these in front of me, I, I, I wouldn't turn my nose up at them. I mean, I would, I would thoroughly enjoy either one. I would enjoy this one more. Um, but I still, if you, if you said, we're going to have, we're going to have the Emerald, I'd be like, great, you know, let's, let's pop it open and, and have some. We were talking about, um, we were talking about Chinese influence in Bordeaux, um, area. And you were talking about how the Chinese really love your logo. That's more for this one, right? Yeah, look at the, look at the shit back here. But yes, it's because they call it dragon boat. It looks for them like a dragon boat, which means fortune and good, good fortune, in, especially in South China. Right. So and it's very recognizable, very easy to recognize, and very easy to copy as well because now they counterfeit them a lot. So I've got a lot of files in my office about counterfeit and fake bechamel, but that's. The dark side of the coin, and and that happens quite a bit with with a lot of the Bordeaux wines, or over there. Some, happen, some famous wines. Mm -hmm. some that famous I mean, no offense, but China is very famous for counterfeiting everything. Um, um, not like they weren't the first to do it. I mean, years. I mean, it still happens now, but you know, years and years and years ago, when I was uh, I, I was born in the New Jersey area, and I moved down to San Antonio when I was a lot younger. But, um, you know, making the visits back to New York and talking about, you know, uh, getting the counterfeit stuff off the back of a truck type of thing, you know, the whole, I, it's, not, it's not exclusive to Italians, but it's part of that culture of, you know, oh, it fell off the back of a truck and whether it was the, the real thing or, or a counterfeit, or going to the yes. garbage district and getting the fake, getting the fake, you know, jackets and watches and purses. Um, I know a guy somewhere that, that Sell some nice watches that aren't uh, that aren't real, but anyway, uh, and not at premium prices. But um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've been reading for quite a while that uh, that you know, with the big interest in their their growing interest in wine, that they're also uh, you know just counterfeiting the wine and just hey, let's just put the label on there and and call it this, and it's really not even, not even close to it. Um, so uh, is, is there? Is it difficult to do anything with with uh, with them in China as far as from here? 
Yeah, yeah, well, it takes time and the things go slowly, but you know, that shows the interest for the, the wine. Right. That's maybe a, a reward for a recognition for fame to, to, right. be, to be copied and counterfeit. We don't, we don't want it, we, we fight against it, we give a bit of money to attorneys and lawyers for that. Uh, right. But uh, I think it's part of the learning process, you know, they, they will have to learn and go through that. And I'm sure it will go down with, with time. And they will manage to to make a little bit to put everything in order, and that will stay, uh, go down. But it take, it will take a few years. But of course, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it didn't exist. They didn't have a fake. Now they do. Right. But I, I suppose it will go down slowly. I, I you know I think you're right because things like I mean, they'll. There'll be something else that will come along that that will capture the interest as far as uh, trying to make something you know trying to counterfeit something, but if nothing else, I, I think you're right. It, the while you don't want them to counterfeit your your stuff, it's going to hopefully bring more people to uh, to the table, and they'll say, you know, I don't want the fake stuff. I want Absolutely. the real stuff. They they, you know? they will require the real one, and they won't, will have to to bring certificates. Mm -hmm. of provenance and we work on that as well to, to make sure the customers all over the world, not only in China, but all over the world, gets the real thing. So, right, because that's what I want. I don't want a fake. I want, if I'm drinking a wine, I want it to be, that's I true. want it to be what's in here. I don't want it to be, you know, somebody's copy of it, even if, so, even if they, even if I know it's, you know, well, it's, it's not, it's not this one, but it tastes just like, it. no, I want this wine. I want it to come from here. I don't want it to be you know, up with the same label and made, you know, in, in someone's backyard in, you know, Missouri somewhere. Uh, we fixed in Missouri. We get only the barrel. Very good barrel from Missouri. Yes, see, there you go. Uh, because the American oak does come from somewhere. It doesn't just magically appear. Um, but yeah, so these are both great. Wonderful wines. So I'm going to wrap this up. I mean, if wherever you're at, if you find bottles of either one of these, um, definitely get them. Uh, like I said, nothing wrong with this one at all. Uh, it's just you know, it's just the second one. So it's just it just doesn't have as much of the qualities as this one. But you can't go wrong with it. Really, with really, it. It's good value for money. There, I mm -hmm. and, You know, in 15 years, I've seen the evolution uh, when I arrived and uh, first time I was visiting the U.S. Nobody wanted to hear about second wines. And really, there's been a change in the past for that. First, because I think we did improve the quality of second wines dramatically, uh, because they're not cheap wines. Again, right. they're quite expensive wines, but they are more affordable uh, than uh, first wine. And then the, the prices of the first wine went up again. Right. So it, the interest it arose the interest for second wine, and I think you know we respect the customers very much. It's very important. And we make a lot of efforts to make as good as we can second wines uh, as possible. Yeah. Well, great. So um, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, again, if you can find either one of these, uh, purchase either one or both. Um, you're not going to go wrong with it. It's a wonder They're both wonderful wines. I do like this one better. And if not, come and visit us. Exactly. Come we'll, visit. Um, we'll be delighted to welcome <laughs> you if you come and visit. It's a, it's a beautiful estate. Uh, just, you know, I'm very glad I decided to not stay in Bordeaux. No offense to the city of Bordeaux, but um, it's just staying up here. I think um, even though I've only been here for a few hours, um, it's just it's just nicer. You know, it's it's more relaxed. I think than than being in Bordeaux. And the weather um, will be good for me. Right. And great. I'm, I'm, I'm traveling to I'm traveling to Saint Emilion and Pomerol and Barsac and, and Sauternes all this week. So I'm, it's a bit of a drive. I'm staying up here the whole time. But it's, a, it's going to be quite a drive to do that. I had plans to stay in San Emilion, but I was only going to be there for the one day. So, and the train, I mean, I could have, I guess I could have taken the train from Libon. Uh, well, it's the Pico. But my car <laughs> is, is out of the, uh, my, my rental car, which by the way is really nice. Um, and, um, but the, the car, I didn't want to pay any extra fees for taking, bringing the car from one place to the other. And they all looked at me funny because I drive. I asked for an automatic. <laughs> Everybody here gets drives manual, and I not that I can't drive manual, mom and dad. They know I can. I just 
prefer to have it automatic. It's just less work, <laughs> especially being in a new place. And, and trust me, I made quite a few wrong turns getting here when I first left the, the car park from uh, from the uh, rental place. I and, and I have GPS, which is great in the car, but I foreign country. I don't really understand the signs very well. And I'm like, uh, matter of fact, I was supposed to make a left turn somewhere, and I completely passed the light. And I'm like, yeah, no, oh, there's a huge blind spot. That's why the light's way back here. And, and then I was, apparently I was in the, um, I was in the wrong lane. So somebody tried to turn where I was and luckily they didn't hit me. And I, that was my, that was my cue to just turn right real quick and, and get out of there. So, um, you manage. Yes. So imagine me trying to do stick shift at the same time and, and uh, stalling the car, trying to get all nervous because I got in somebody's way. All right. So, um. Like I said, we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, stopping in and uh, checking this out. Uh, we have more to come for for uh, uh, this rest of the week. Uh, plans to have uh, another seven uh, interviews. Uh, willing that everyone wants to be on camera, not everybody likes to be on camera. Um, so uh, we'll do that. And uh, like I said, if you can uh, find these ones, get them. It's been a pleasure. I thank you very thank much you. Thanks to do this in person instead of over Skype. Yeah. You know, people will look at you and hope to see everybody on the, on the blog. Oh yes, on the uh, website. I, I expect to see a few hundred, if not more, uh, views pretty quickly on this once I get it posted, which will be probably next week, sometime middle of next week. I'll, I'll start posting everything and um, once once that's done. I have I posted something today. If I recorded a couple of weeks ago, and I have something for Wednesday, and I don't have anything else after that. But all my all my editing stuff is at home. I didn't bring it all on the laptop. <laughs> so we'll have it all next week. Travel night. Thank yes. you. Thank, Thank you for coming. And see you next time. Thank you.